This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I'm going to talk about sugar apples and real estate and go look at some fruit and trees, the Quaimuk. This place has a really big pool. We redid everything here and it's got a screen on it and it's geothermal so it heats and cools. This property was built in 1962 and it hadn't been remodeled. So we gutted it and had it all remodeled, except for one bathroom. I just had had enough. Uh, the one that is like in the, the laundry room, the bathroom in the laundry room. It's four bedroom, three bath. And we did everything. Um, replastered the pool, rescreened the pool screen. Um, put in new septic, put in new uh, propane whole house generator, put in new roof, put in new septics. It's got, uh, it's got a uh, two car garage and, or carport and it's got storm windows, hurricane windows, and a geothermal heating and air system. So the utilities are very cheap on this house and with the pool. And the taxes are really cheap because they don't charge for agriculture. Since we're our, most of our property is agriculture and this is an old house, the taxes are really low, which is great. be very easy to keep this property uh, with its tax exempt status since it's a perennial biodynamic rare tropical fruit farm. Mm -hmm. I love these aeroids. I'm obsessed. So it's got a little office out here that's not connected to the house. the only room in the house that doesn't have plantation shutters and then it's got a little bathroom and laundry room right here and then that leads into the kitchen and you can look at pictures on Zillow or Realtor if you go up to the Realtor pictures you can actually scroll through the the uh, pictures in that little screen and more pictures come up so that's kind of nice and we put a two bedroom or two, two, uh, basically a two car garage with 10 foot high ceilings metal um, that withstands 185 mile per hour winds, supposedly. And um, that's where we keep our cows, our zebus. So these sugar apples are $10 a pound. We've sold $1,000 worth of sugar apples already this year. and. I have all these seeds. They're a dollar each. Look at all the ants in there. So ants and fungi work together. <clears throat> so I, I like ants. Um, they go for sugar apple flesh. There's some sugar apple flesh on here. So I keep these outside until they're all dried off. And um, they're pretty dry now. They're nice seeds. There's probably a 500 of them in there. So it's another $500. I'm gonna plant out a bunch of sugar apples just because they're so easy. And um, some, some Atamoyas, a bunch of Atamoya seeds. And probably like, I don't know, three or 400 seedlings I'm gonna plant this year in the back with the mangoes intercropped. We don't water anything, so we don't have to worry about that. People water because they use water-based fertilizers like Hollytone. That's why they water. You don't have to water anything in Florida if you focus on the soil. Nobody does. The permaculture, but they don't even talk about the soil. This is like a undisturbed 
not disturbing it, not walking on it, not mowing it, leaving the stuff that grows in there grow, but managing it if it's something that's like a parasitic vine or a pepper tree that's getting too big or one of these. I found that the trees The soft trees, like these nitrogen fixing trees and the pine trees and stuff, they are very, uh, form relationships with fungi also. And I'm amazed by the fungi in Florida. It's just, it's here all the time. It's just amazing. I mean, it's amazing that none of this stuff is watered. I think it's just worst drought I've ever seen in the summer. I'm sure there's been others that have been worse, but um, I haven't experienced it. Mangoes look good. They're starting to butt out so many trees here i planted so many freaking trees here it's unbelievable all of them like the spanish lime the koi muck the white sapote the tamarinds the sweet tamarinds the lychees we got them all one thing i never planted a lot of was jabatacabas or avocados That's probably it. Everything else <clears throat> grows. So it's got this old barn here, and it's got this little structure here, and that's where the donkeys live, and then they can go out to pasture, and then, I mean, really, somebody wanted to park cars in here. I guess they could, because it's wide enough where you could mow it a little wider and trim the trees up. And then there's a two car cow barn right here with the cement pad. That's what we put in. And then it's connected to the pasture on the other side of the barn and through these pens. <clears throat> we have about almost four acres of weedy, woody pastures. That's what I like. I'm getting it ready to, so that I can start planting fruit trees. The zebus seem to like the weeds and the leaves and the, all the other stuff. And the donkeys don't really eat a lot of the, they like the seeds, the tips of the, the grass. That's what they like the best. Mm -hmm. So nobody talks about doing this style of management, even though when you look at like pictures from Belize or Ecuador or Colombia or even the countryside in Europe of old uh, orchards. It's all looks like this. Sure, it's not just like this, but it kind of looks like this. Mine's just very diverse, biodiverse. I mean, there's just so much stuff growing in here that it's, it's really amazing. It's living tapestry of herbs and grasses. Couldn't do it without the orchard floor, but everyone mows in Florida, they all mow. I, it's just like, as soon as I see somebody's mowing, I know they don't know what they're doing. They'll never talk about soil health. So I can't really watch their stuff. I just changed the channel. Probably the same thing they do with mine when I start showing the weeds. Oh, this guy's crazy. <laughs> it's the same way, I guess. Um, the Koi Muck's looking good. We've only been here six years. I know, it's amazing. I used to go up to Flying Fox Fruit and buy trees from Adam before I even owned this place. And it's amazing that we've fruited seven different species of Garcinias here. We've fruited them in six years. 
fruited six of them in five years. Okay, I see some uh, fruit changing color. It's kind of getting a little bit of, see the fruit in there? A little white greenish thing, globe. And then the run, well, fruit there. That one on the right is looking a little, like it's going a little pale brown. And that's what you look for. This tree has a lot more fruit than it's ever had before. Um, last year was the first year it fruited. This is dry farmed. Everything's grown the same way. Everything. There's not a different plan for different plants. It's all one system. One undisturbed system that I apply tiny amounts of zebu manure and donkey manure and pine shavings and grass hay a day with some pee in it. Bedding from the barn. When I clean out the barn every day. The barns, I should say. This is like a really horrible drought. This is the first time this pond has ever dried up in the summer. It's dry. I saw footprints across it from some creature. So our house we built here, it's like really comfy. And I'll look at that jackfruit and then go over by there. I'm gonna go look at the sugar apples. Where's my path? And nobody talks about not disturbing the soil system. I mean, people put plastic down on the ground here in Florida, you know, shade cloth. That's just like, oh my God. We get a lot of rain here and we have lots of sugar apples. A rain is not the problem with the sugar apples. Moisture is not the problem. It's the compacted soil that is the problem. So this jackfruit's looking good. Been a bad year for jackfruit because of the two days of freeze we had this past winter. Um, worst cold spell ever since I've been here. But it didn't kill our trees. It damaged about 30 mangoes. But most of those had been damaged the year before from a a freeze we had one night. Two years in a row we've had freeze. We've never had freeze before. <clears throat> but stuff made it. The stuff that freezes in is, is in areas where the soil is compacted. The stuff that doesn't grow is in the areas where your soil is compacted. These people mostly plant in their lawns or what used to be lawn. That's what this was. And that soil's compacted, especially if the property has been there a while. So they mow with machinery here, uh, drive all over it. And that's compacted sand, which is the worst thing. That's a recipe for cement. Took me about six years to figure that out that it was the compaction that was causing the drought problem, the freeze problem, and the non-growing problem when plants and other things don't grow like they do here. So wax, wax jambus are, I'm, I, it's amazing that they're so drought tolerant. I would have thought that they would have just died. It's a purple hog plum. Or a, yeah, I think that's what it is. This is another wax jambu.
Look at all the little oak trees that died. You know, native species that died. They're probably not dead. They probably just lost their leaves and we'll send out new ones. Seem to be going into a wet period again. The rain barrels are full. I found this interesting. I put this horn, my biodynamic horn, the 500 horn, directly into the water. And I saw that the part of it had come out. So this is the horn. And then this came out of it. This is a dirt ball. That's BD 500. It just doesn't break down. And even in a rain barrel, it's because it's, it's just amazing. I mean, this is just amazing. I'm not gonna break this up, but that's what it is. It's been in there since the spring equinox. I put it back in the horn when I see it out of it. And it sits in there. I think that's where it likes to live. It's got fungi in there. You can see them coming out. It'll float to the top of the top of the rain barrel. One of my subscribers reminded me that it's time to start making, get ready, ready to make the BD 500 again. So this house, we everything's painted. We put gutters on it, new metal roof. Everything's got uh, wooden blinds, you know, uh, plant blinds, all the windows inside. And it's got new septics. It's got two septics because it's a really long house. And it's a heat pump. And a Generac, Ga you know, gas powered. Uh, whole house system. It's got wooden floors, 100 year warranty wooden floors and um, cement floors, terrazzo and cement and caustic tile floors. 2,600 square feet, 25, something like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna list this property with a real estate agent because I got to find the right person. It's gotta be somebody that aligns with the biodynamic and that's gonna continue it because I just don't want somebody coming here and saying they know better. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, mowing everything and getting putting the uh, standard Florida procedures of kill and beat down and spray. Cause the, and then you'd have to start watering. I mean, I don't see a lot of people developing commercial sugar apple farms in Florida or commercial cacao farms like this biodynamic farms. I just looked at my fruit records. We've been selling fruit since the beginning of February, since February, or selling stuff since the beginning of February, like February 20th or 2nd, something like that. So that's, that's a lot of months continuously. I, I just can't believe that. So I am doing it. Um, we sell all our sugar apples. What we don't sell, we end up eating and I save the seeds. So it's none, none, none go to waste. They're too good. There's a whole bunch more. That's a new, uh, a new one. There's a lot of fruit still on them. So I see it's going to be a long year. Then none of these, these have never been watered, these sugar apples ever. None of this stuff is watered. That's why this ginger looks bad, but that's okay. People don't seem to see that the trees that do the best are the trees that are in the areas of the yard that you're not 
micromanaging. The areas that you let the weeds go, the tree that is on the edge. Look at how good that is. But they fail to put it together and see that it's so easy to grow in Florida naturally. You don't have to do a thing. <laughs> you just have to stay off the soil. That's kind of all you have to do. And if you want fruit, you got to apply animal manures, holistically grown animal manures. You got to know where your crop comes from. It's looking good. Yeah, I don't know of any other commercial sugar apple farms in Florida. It's kind of amazing that people can't see what we're doing here. That more people don't see it. I know a lot of you do, because I've met you. Thank you very much, but you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> They'll come eventually because their well will be so polluted with salt or their trees won't grow with their water-soluble fertilizers anymore because it's too expensive to buy more and more and more, which they say you have to do with global warming. So it's best just to get away from those now um, and take a holistic approach to growing. Yeah, I just, I want a family to buy this um, and I want them to, uh, if you want your grandkids to like you, buy a rare tropical fruit farm for them. <clears throat> People come for the fruit. <laughs> no matter how evil you can be, they still want to come back. <clears throat> well, that's probably not true, but you know what I'm saying. My, for, my uh, definition of evil isn't quite... I don't go all the way there with it. I'm talking about being moody or something like that. So they're starting to flower again. Now that we've been getting a little bit of rain. So our sugar apples at our beach house produce two crops a year and stay evergreen. So they'd never been watered and they were on a lawn. They don't produce a lot because... I don't put inputs there every day like I do here. I only gave uh, biodynamic compost one time and it was 10 pounds of biodynamic compost on two and a half acres. <laughs> one time and how many years have I had that place? More than 10. There's so many sugar apples. This is a ginger that died of the freeze. One ginger died from the freeze. That's amazing, this is still here. We didn't get any rain. It, that should have all been gone. All the brown should have been gone by now. This should all just be green this time of year. This one died from the drought. their sugar apples look great it'll come back there's roots there's rhizomes in the ground and what's down there will be consumed by the biology and hopefully make and build soil that aggregates not just organic matter since it's in the ground probably has more of a chance to um, little tiny sugar apples too so it's going to be a very long season um, they're good looking. They're good sugar apples. I'm telling you, they are delicious. <clears throat> Thrilled with them. Last year was the first year I gave them uh, 50 pounds each of uh, our bedding, our cow manure, our compost, fresh. Not next to them, but near them, like close. And... They responded with kindness. So there it is. There's a pile. It's full of mushrooms, uh, soft woody stuff, forms relationships with fungi. 
just like the ginger does. <clears throat> it's what you want, because the fungi are gonna bring the water to your tree in the right amounts. The clean water, hopefully the water that doesn't have PFASs in it. These citrus are weeds, I'm telling you. This is our citrus. Produces heavily in four years. Produces good in three. From seed. It's an Inga cinnamoniae next to a mango. Next to a ginger, next to a banana, next to a heliconia, next to a pigeon pea. <clears throat> yep. We grow our stuff undisturbed. I go in here to pick fruit. This tree had fruit last year, but this year it did not give us fruit, this little jackfruit. Tiny little tree, look at how little it is. It looked a little haggard during the drought, but the freeze, the freeze, I believe, was the biggest contributor to why it didn't fruit this year. <coughs> so it had some lower branches, but you know, the frost settles on the grass, which is right at the level of those lower branches. So, uh, they burnt off. I'm gonna go look at the cacao to see if it's flowering. It's a real Theobroma cacao. Here's this, this citrus from our trees here. These little citrus. Lemon. I'm gonna plant a bunch of those this year. So we got a lot of fruit. Only off the heavily producing trees. <clears throat> trees that have the most fruit on them. So a little achacha. It's not the best place for it. They really don't like being next to paths. Um, which is where it is. This is what happens when you mow. It's like there's no, it compacts it and then water just runs right off of it. Okay, I, I looked at this little Adamoya. Where is that thing? The other day and I showed it, it was looking horrible. Now look at it now. I told you I couldn't be fooled by it and its misery look during the drought because it does just fine. They know how to survive. Basically, you gotta stay off the soil. I mean, I think that's like all anybody needs to know. I mean, that's what they tell you to do at the sand dunes. It's the same thing. It's all sand here. Stay the hell off the soil. What do we do? We drive on it and we mow it. And then we spray glyphosate around the tree. Uh, or some other weed killer. It's nothing is more wrong than removing living plants from around a living plant. Especially something like a tree. It's a seed grown mango sugarloaf. It's looking good. I love this cassava, uh, the blue color. Got lots of, lots of, lots of cassava, definitely a crop, huge crop. Those are the syzygium trees, rose apples. There's a, a cha-cha. Look at the cacao. I mean, those look like uh, aeroid leaves. Nice aeroid leaves. What is that? That's a weed with a cacao next to it. Cacao.
how I'm not aware of anybody in Florida growing organic certified and fruiting cacao naturally, you know, because we don't water anything. It's all grown the same way. Cacao, that uh, brown leaf tip is from the drought, but it's fine. The tree's fine. Looks great. Cacao, because we've fruit cacao from seed here in five years. So we got a few more years with these smaller trees, but they're going to start up within the next three years, four years for sure, but three years probably. And we got five fruit off our cacao for the first time from seed this past winter. Um, yeah, we grow the aeroids the same way, no water. And I've counted the fruit on this for next year if I sell them for $25 each, you know, the Monstera Deliciosa fruit. So this little patch is like $450. And you can grow it underneath the tropical fruit trees. So it's like, I started growing the aeroids for to improve the orchard floor. Mm -hmm. I had more cacao back here, but I don't really see it. This year is going to be a big mango, or yeah, mango year. Big, big mango year. Hopefully I could drop my price of the mangoes back down to $5 a pound. But it made it a lot easier because not everyone wanted to buy them all for $10 a pound, which was good. So I could spread them out more, but not everyone got them this year because we didn't have a whole lot. And they went quick. They trickled in, little amounts, little amounts. It wasn't very good. We made as much money on our mangoes this year because I doubled the price, but... It was a, because of the freeze, it was a bad mango year. But next year, it's a cha-cha. That was a guava, it's a guava. I have so many trees planted here. It's just, it's not even funny. It's really, uh, amazing. 250 mangoes and then everything grows so well. I, I'm just surprised to hear people have issues and then they don't even look at the obvious, the soil, the soil health. It's the soil health people. <laughs> I mean, when are they gonna mention it? Let's talk about the soil. Let's talk about the fungi in the soil. Like, oh, they'll catch on eventually, I guess. This is the Noclea latifolia. The one growing in full shade. Look at how nice that looks. I always talk about this because the African peach, because I don't know. The African plants like the MB, they don't seem to mind drought at all. And the cacao doesn't seem to mind drought at all. This is the mother plant of some of our seedlings I have now growing here. Um, this is a tree that I fruited the plant in Brevard County and grew the seed out here. So I get starting to uh, send out nodules on it for flowering because I know I saw a couple flowers about a few weeks ago so I know it's starting to amp up now that we got rain but it didn't seem to mind the drought. It should really have some more growth on it right now but it looks like it's starting. I show this tree a lot. I show it, showed it in winter when it didn't have any leaves on it after a long drought and long cold. And they're dry farmed and grown just like everything else. So this is a baby tree from that tree. And 
it didn't look very happy, but I see that it's got some new growth. Uh, this is a Telesia floresii, a coloc, that I've recently found. There's another cacao, looking better. I go look at that uh, Philodendron Maximus, because all those aeroids I got to plant out here in the winter, I'm going to do the cuttings in the winter and plant them in the orchard floor. So this thing, I planted out. It looked horrible. I dug it back up, moved it in the house, and rehabbed it. And that's from sunburn from when it was planted out. And then it looked good, and then it started looking bad. So then I moved it out here, and it started growing. And it looks very good now. This one gets 10 feet, so it's not going to get huge up into this tree, but the leaves get gigantic on it, and it looks happy. It's amazing that this grass turned brown during the drought, all that brown, but that's all chop and drop that the grass does for me for free. Chop and drop that the fungi can probably uh, deliver into the root zone with the part living plant because it's still connected. You know, the arbuscular fungi, ones that grow in plants. Oh, there is some Garcinia fruit. So the Garcinias have been giving me dollars all since February, I think, or, you know, March. Growing the same way. Huge seed, but they taste really good. I make tea out of the leaves of these. Oh, there's a lot of fruit on here. I look at this tree every day. It's got a little nipple at the end. It's Braziliensis. Is this? No, this is it's the one I call Intermedia. It's the mid-range one. Then you got the little round one that's I call Brasiliensis, and then but Gardneriana is also called Brasiliensis, so I call Gardneriana Gar Gardneriana. <laughs> yeah, the, the Garcinias are so <laughs> confusing. Uh, we probably have about I don't know. I've planted over a thousand Garcinia seeds here. <clears throat> I'm gonna plant about a hundred Garcinia seeds in the back. That's why we started this farm, the Achacha tree. Anyway, this is Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm, Florida Natural Farming. Hope you have a beautiful day.